NC State comes up short in the final four, but we are so grateful for the run of a lifetime. You are locked on Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's opening sponsor is LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. Happy Monday to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle, Kenton Gibbs, both men's and women's come up short in the final four, but we're grateful. We're proud. We are so unbelievably proud of everything we just witnessed for our school over the course of the last month. The men fell at the hands of Purdue on Saturday night in Arizona by a score of 63-50. to The women fell in Cleveland to the eventual national champion in South Carolina by a score of 78-59 to on Friday. Kenton, what did you make of each one of these games over the weekend? Just outclassed. They were just, they were, you know, I, I, they both had the games very tight at halftime, but there were stretches in the second half where, I mean, obviously that third quarter is what doomed our women's team. You can't have a, a quarter where you get outscored by 23 points. You just can't have that happen. And uh, we've talked about those notorious third quarter droughts that happen. Um, and that's obviously not acceptable against a, a national champion, a proven uh, winner in Don Staley and co uh, over there, you know, Camila Cardoso and company. That's, that's just never going to get it done. And, and on the men's side of things, They followed the game plan to the T defensively. They really and truly did. You could not ask for anything better. Anybody but Edie, anybody but Zach, anybody else showed up. But here's the thing about it. That strategy was actually effective. Held them to their lowest point total of the season. All right. Held them to their lowest point total of the season. The difference was in the three-point shooting. That's the difference. There was a 13-point game. Our backcourt, when Michael O'Connell went down and when he came back, kind of hobbled. We were a little bit disheveled. We were taking bad shots. You know, it um, it ends this way. But, again, both of these teams, they put on something that goes beyond sports, goes beyond March, goes beyond Raleigh, goes beyond basketball, you know. And uh, it's, it's like that old Winnie the Pooh quote, right? What a beautiful thing it is for us to be sad to say goodbye to it. Because imagine if Louisville would have finished us off in that game. Imagine if UVA and McNeely hit that free throw. Imagine what happens if in the first round of uh, of this tournament, the women get knocked out. We may very well look at both of these seasons very differently, even though to me, you know, they both taught us how to believe just in different ways because the men had can't get right itis. And Grace and I kept saying, if they could just combine the hot offensive night with the good defensive night, if they could just find a way the gentlemen connect them. We'll be just fine. But the women taught us to believe in a way that this team came out of nowhere, predicted to finish toward the back half of the ACC. And yet from go, they came out putting belt to behind. Ultimately, lack of depth came back to bite them down the stretch. But that team's going to be back. That team's going to be back. So all in all, you know, two runs that we'll never forget. We'll never forget. It's the Vince McMahon meme of crying and doing this number here (laughs) because when we talk about 2024 and Wolfpack nation, you know, beating the Dukies twice in this run, beating the dirty foot club for an ACC championship, having our women advance to their first final four since what is it? 90 is the the mid or late nineties. 98. We were still having mommy clean up after us last time the team was in the final four. I tip my cap to both of these teams. Wolfpack Nation is indebted to you all forever. 
it's an extremely bitter end to what were phenomenal runs. And, you know, getting into the the Purdue game first from Saturday, because that's the most fresh. It's frustrating from a standpoint of the game was very much reachable. You were in it. It just felt about an arm's length away for the entirety of the game. But you still felt in it. There were moments where Purdue felt like they were up by 25, even though they were up by like nine. The inefficiency on offense was the storyline because the NC State defense, even on Zach Eady, was pretty good. And Zach Eady scored 20 points. I think there's only a handful of times over the course of this season he scored 20 or less. What we talked about last week on anyone else on Purdue, if they're if they're going to win that game, it's going to have to be through their outside shooting. And they got it done. So ultimately, you tip your cap. But the frustrating point is, obviously, you lose Michael O'Connell pretty early in this game, and he ends up missing the majority of the game despite coming back later on. And the NC State offense looked like they reverted immediately to what they looked like early in the regular season, where it just felt very disconjointed. It felt a lot like, all right, DJ Horn, you're all we got right now. Please go get a bucket or else we're going to continue sinking. And to his credit, DJ Horn kept us afloat for quite some time. But when you don't get anything else from virtually anyone else, there's only so much you can do, and especially against a team like Purdue. Early in that game, the offensive boards is what had Purdue ahead because they got two, three, four chances. And when you have a guy like Edie, you have outside shooters like Purdue does, it's a ticking time bomb. It's only a matter of time before they cash in on those opportunities. And that's exactly what you saw happen. If Michael O'Connell goes down and you don't have any way of recreating what he brings to the table, the poise that he brings to the table. His court vision and playmaking is extremely underrated. Good things happen when Michael O'Connell is on the court. We saw that to be proven time and time again here over the course of this postseason run. Michael O'Connell could be considered a hero of this postseason run because there were several moments that the rest of the run does not happen if not for Michael O'Connell. And so to lose that in this game for the majority of the game, it's just so hard to replace that type of thing. And and I don't want to rag on Casey Morsell at all because that, that does not need to be done. But he had a very tough game. And when you lose O'Connell, somebody else has to play above basically their punching weight. That would have had to have been Morsell in that spot and ultimately just couldn't get it done. So it, it's tough. It's a tough pill to swallow. That's the last time we're going to see them all play. That's the last time we have DJ Burns in an NC State uniform. That's the last time we have DJ Horn in an NC State uniform, Casey Morsell. That's that's where the frustration is because you hate it for them. You you hate the way that that finishes on such a sour note. All the work that they had poured into the last four weeks, there is no there is no disappointment. There is no sadness. There is only joy. There is only being so unbelievably proud for everything that they just accomplished when nobody believed that they could. Nobody expected what we just saw happen. Nobody. And they pulled off the impossible. They pulled off the impossible essentially nine straight times. And it led them all the way to somewhere that we had not been since 1983. That's something that will not ever be forgotten in this fan base. Not ever. Not even if we end up building this program, we win multiple national championships. We will always remember that run right here because that one reignited everything. It brought back hope for this school. It brought back passion for NC State basketball. Waking that up again in this fan base was such an incredible thing to feel over the course of the last month. My defensive coordinator uh, from high school, who I love to death, Jermaine Crowell, he used to say, everybody's seniors are going to be crying at the end of the games in the state tournament. But only one group of seniors is going to be crying tears of joy. You know, you talk about even if we go on to win multiple championships, this team will never be forgotten. The first team, the first team I was on varsity with, um, we lost in the semifinals. And the next two years, we go on to win it. But nobody glances over, though, the team that lost in the semifinals because it was the final four, in essence, of Michigan yeah. High School football, because without them, there was no us. Mm-hmm. Without having that moment to knock on the door, you don't know what it takes to kick it down. If you look at the Don 
uh, Staley, South Carolina teams, they got to the Final Four and then the Elite Eight before they won their first one, or Sweet 16 next year, one of the two. I know they didn't get back to the Final Four the next year before they won it. Wes Moore is right there. That brother is knocking and he's coming. There's something coming. And this is the, the first step of getting there. We just got to keep believing next year. We just got to keep believing because this team taught us how to believe again for a program that, again, hadn't seen the championship in me or Grace's lifetime in terms of men's basketball, football, baseball, hadn't seen one. This team taught us we can have nice things at NC State. Continuing to talk about this magical run after a quick word from our sponsors. Our sponsor of the day is LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to be able to find quality professionals that are just right for that role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. They have a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to interview and hire. They give you access to professionals that you simply cannot find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of this while making the process quicker and intuitive. Hiring is easier when you have this many quality candidates to choose from. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses can get a qualified candidate within just 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats that they simply may not have the time or resources to hire effectively. So LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make this process easier. They've even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, streamlining this process. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Middle portion of our Monday show, still trying to encapsulate everything that we just witnessed over the course of the last four weeks and I'm not going to lie to you folks. It is difficult to really try and articulate everything that we're thinking of what just happened and and feeling after what we just witnessed after this weekend. It's going to take a really long time to truly process two postseason runs we just saw out of the same school in NC State, sending two schools to the Final Four, which had never been done in NC State history. And we just saw it in the most unlikely of times. I had a tweet that I sent out after the the NC State loss to Purdue on Saturday night about the the three seniors moving on from the program. And this is not to disrespect Alex Nunnally. The tweet was me saying there's there's not enough ways to thank DJ Horn, DJ Burns, and Casey Morsell to now everything that they mean to this school and this program and all that they just accomplished when nobody believed that they could. I've talked about DJ Horn being a Raleigh kid and finding his way back here at NC State when he wanted to begin his journey at NC State. Took the long route to other schools before arriving back here, and he led NC State to their first conference championship in 37 years. That will never, ever be forgotten. We will think about what DJ Horn just brought back to this school in this city forever. Forever. That that is a March legend. That's an NC State basketball legend. DJ Burns, I mean, what more can you say about DJ Burns? He was the player of March Madness. And that includes Zach Eady, Donovan Klingon. They're going to play for the title on Monday night. They were not getting the attention, not getting the love that DJ Burns got. He was the focus of the tournament. Our, our DJ Burns, our guy. Our team was the story of March Madness. And again, for NC State fans that have experienced decades of heartbreak and pain and seemingly coming up short every time you reach a big moment, to see our team be showered in appraisal and love and recognition for the most unbelievable run, it's it's just a feeling that is so so surreal it's so unforgettable the buzz in the city of raleigh and the hundreds of people on hillsborough street watching on one screen is absurd that that image the images that i've seen of that will never be erased out of my mind the sea of red in the cardinal stadium and it it wasn't because the cardinals were playing it's because nc state was in town i'll never forget that 
how loud you heard and the home of the wolf pack in the national anthem never will forget that they have provided so many unbelievable moments i haven't even talked about the acc championship that they won they beat the dirty foot club to do it that is history book type stuff and one one podcast on one day is not nowhere near enough to encapsulate all that, but can't do anything other than just feel so immensely proud of everything they just accomplished in the span of a month. You know, say what you want about Alex Nunnally not being on the court much, but I know for a fact he has more championship rings than R.J. Davis and Armando Baycott combined. He they sure does. did like a fusion day, but seriously, you know, it, you also have to thank River Baldwin and, and Mimi Collins and company over here on the women's team because yes. – um, you know, we talked about the guard play a lot, and rightfully so. And in terms of if you just scoreboard watch, you would think the guards were doing it all. But think about the bigs that we had to beat along the way. Texas leading scorers were all in the front court. Cameron Brink, oh, she Brink is the one. She's the one now. You know, you can't stop her. Our front court put a stop to it. As soon as it gets started, bet we stop it. And fouled her out, you know, and uh, it's, again, it, it showed that we can get there. They're coming. And I'm telling you, with another top 10 recruiting class, we saw how the freshmen showed up and showed out this year. The freshmen next year are expected to do the same thing. And I know Wes going to get in that portal and get him some bigs. All right, no, I'm not even, that's not even a question. So, you know, all of these seniors. All of these seniors that made it happen, all of these seniors that uh, put their hearts, put their bodies, put their mind. There were so many times where you saw so many of these players hobble. There were so many times where you saw these these folks, you know, you saw Casey Morsell in the ACC tournament out there on one leg. You saw Jaden Taylor at many points out there on one leg, and they still got it done. This run was a culmination of just beautiful moment of delivery after beautiful moment of delivery for both of these teams. We're excited to see uh, this run. And like I said, I fully believe that this is the standard. If you want to say I'm delusional for that, if you want to say, oh, Keats is still Keats and, and that's who he is, or Westmore got lucky, like you said, with the, the bracketing and all that, I don't give a damn. Both of these teams will be back. This is the standard. The standard is the standard. Up the scope. Up it. I think it's important to understand that a lot of – quote unquote, blue bloods, how they get to be there is essentially a run like this one. You build for a while, you reach the sweet 16, you reach the elite eight, you finally get to the final four and you get a taste of that. More than likely you come up short, like throw Bailey was talking about, you get up there and you see what it takes to get to that point. And sometimes failure on a, on a stage like this, it's beneficial. NC State men's getting to the Final Four and running into Purdue and Zach Eady and coming up short, there is a silver lining to that. And not just the momentum we've been talking about, but all of a sudden the, the program sees, you know, when we lock in, when we, when we accept our role and we thrive in our role and we believe in each other, we play for each other, we're capable of getting to that level of postseason play. Despite coming up short, you now understand that you have what it takes to get there. It can be done. We've talked for months on this podcast that NC State can have nice things. It yeah. can be done. We are not snake bitten forever. Wes Moore has been building the, a run like this one for quite some time, and he's had great teams not make it as far as this one did this year. That is a silver lining. With the recruiting class coming in and the experience that you do return for next season, it only goes up from here, or at least it should. See what needs to be fixed through the portal or fixed through recruiting to improve your team and then get there and then maybe and one, maybe and two, and you bring home the whole thing. You get a taste of that now, and it makes you hungrier. You finally get to the table, and you taste a little bit of that steak, and you say, hmm, next time I'm coming for the whole thing. And think about how easy it is to now get players to buy into your philosophies. You can say, you know, I mean, you can argue with me if you want to, but I've been to the final. I've been to the mountaintop. I've been there. 
When I tell you you need to rotate in this way, when I tell you you need to close out in this way, when I tell you you need to attack the screen in this way, you need to make sure that this guy, you're attached to the hip or you're communicating the screen or whatever, it's because when we did that, we went from a 10 seed in the ACC tournament to a Final Four team through simply doing the little things. And so, you know, again, I'm – I'm believing in this team. I'm buying stock, and damn it, I ain't selling. Rounding out our Monday episode in just one moment after another quick word from our sponsors. Last couple minutes here on Monday, just still continuing to encapsulate the magic of what NC State just pulled off in March Madness. I've seen this sentiment tossed around, and I wholeheartedly agree. The two runs that NC State just put together, that is what makes March Madness. That is the the madness in the March NC state and what they just pulled off is everything that is right about the NCAA basketball tournament. The 11 seed that had to roll through the ACC tournament to even get here. They shouldn't have even got into the tournament. They were on the wrong side of the bubble by a wide margin. They had to do the impossible, which is winning five games in five days as a 10 seed in your own conference you had to beat the only five schools within that conference that had ever won a national championship. And they did it. That is stamped. That is cemented forever. NC State did the impossible, and they won the ACC championship in 2024. And then you get into March Madness, and then you go on another four-game win streak, beating the likes of Texas Tech, the, the would-have-been Cinderella, and Jack Golke in Oakland. Marquette, who's a very good Big East team, and then Duke, who you already had to beat just two weeks prior, it is accomplishing the impossible. Being underdogs in, what, seven of those nine games? Once they locked in and believed in each other and what what they could do with that belief to get to the Final Four with with this team in this season, it is so unbelievably remarkable. And... We keep saying unbelievable and incredible and this, that, and the other. There is no word that can really hammer home what, what we just witnessed. It is, it is one of the most absurd postseason runs to ever be seen. It is one of the most incredible March Madness runs of all time. And it is a shame that it did not end with a title. But again, we picked up that ACC title. We picked up the South Regional title this team just hung two banners in the most unlikely of scenarios that is what sports is all about that's what college sports specifically is all about these things don't just happen which is why it's so special a run like this doesn't just happen the last run essentially like this one was our own in 1983 but these two teams put together it's the stuff of 30 for 30s. It's the stuff of legend. It's the stuff that we're going to tell our kids one day when they're talking about that. There's no way that we're going to beat this team. They're our rivals, and they've been, you know, stomping the mess out of us for forever. Let me tell you about an old guy named DJ Burns. He was a very big fella, but he had some sweet feet. Boy, I tell you what. Let me tell you about a hometown kid named DJ Horn. He may have taken the scenic route, but he landed right where he was supposed to be. Again, this stuff, it means something. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. I think perhaps the coolest part of all of this is we, you know, we've been saying that if you're younger than 40 years old, this is the greatest, you know, month stretch of NC State basketball in your lifetime. I think it goes even deeper than that. I think this is the greatest month to be an NC State fan at any point in our lives, if you're younger than 40. You've never experienced buzz like we had over the course of this postseason run. You've never experienced, I mean, outside of the the 2021 Omaha team, this close to a national championship. You've never seen that. So this is the most proud I've ever been as an NC state fan, I've been a state fan my entire life, 28 years. I've never been so proud of this school, this athletic program, the players, the fans. I have never been more proud 
to be an NC State Wolfpack fan. And it was so cool to watch the country adopt us as America's team. We even saw Dirty Foot Club members decide that they would cheer for the pack, that they were impressed by what NC State was doing. When's the last time you could say that was the case? Whole country was pulling for NC State to see how far they could go. They wanted to see DJ Burns against Zach Eady in the semifinals. They wanted to embrace the story of DJ Horn being a hometown hero. They wanted to embrace the story of Kevin Keats being four minutes away from losing his job to making it to the final four. This is one of the most unbelievable moments in in my lifetime, in many of our lifetimes. And to see celebrities tweet about NC State. Steph Curry was following NC Steph, say that out loud. Steph Curry was pulling for NC State in this tournament. It, it's, it's just so unbelievable that little old NC State, they finally had their day in the sun. We feel like we've been in the shadows. And we feel like we've been a sleeping giant for three decades. That sleeping giant's awake now. That sleeping giant is awake. And when we really wake up, when we stand up, we get out of bed, we're going to be hungry for more. And you could very well see that this postseason run could be the start of something much, much greater. That'll do it for us here on Monday. Again, pretty hard to encapsulate everything we just witnessed, but it's going to take a long time to really process all of this. We appreciate you all tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button. Drop your comments in the comment box. Tell us what these postseason runs have meant to you, have meant to your family, have meant to your friends. Tell us what you will remember the most about NC State going to the Final Four in 2024. And if you have not already, mash that subscribe button. We will see you all tomorrow. And until then, go Pack. Go Pack.